Hi, and welcome back to Green Country Custom Baits. I'm Jeff, going to be the host today as usual. Uh, this is, video is going to be in the complete tutorial uh, for custom lure art, and we're going to do a basic shad pattern and uh, on the Strike King and this rock crawler, and we're going to use uh, kind of as I did when I was first learning how we're going to we're going to kind of try to replicate this pattern from a DT6 and uh, uh, show you how I would break down what colors are in this and how to get as close of a match to that as I, I want. And again, you can do this with uh, any crankbaits that, uh, that you want to paint. And uh, it, going back again to my history, I have no had no formal training whatsoever in our brush, how to mix colors, how to come up with it. So uh, I'm going to kind of take you through the thought processes that I use. There's many different ways to do it. A lot of people out there that are extremely good at, at picking colors and deciphering them. And with more experience, you will too. Uh, but I'll show you the, the methods that I use. And again, uh, after the intro, we're going to start spraying some paint on a basic shad pattern. And this is the Disco Shad. Okay, so if we're going to put this pattern on this particular bait, um, we're just going to look over the pattern real quick. It is, it's not a straight white, it's more of a bone white. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a white uh, bone base coat. And obviously it has a very light yellow, so it's, we're going to have to mix some, tone some yellow down with some white. We have a what appears to be kind of a green pumpkin or I would say this is sep sepia okay it's a darker green could even be a moss green but moss green is going to be a little too green uh, and then this particular bait has some silver or chrome scale patterns over that green and then a real dark blue uh, glitter more or less, that's just a sparkalescent paint that's kind of covering the entire bait. So we'll use a hot rod. We won't get the, the blue in it unless we want glitter, but uh, uh, I'm completely out of the, the sparkalescent blue, uh, which just throw some pearl onto it. It's a transparent uh, bait. But anyway, that's how we're going to replicate this onto this rock crawler and maybe also show some of the the Strike King bait. So anyway, that's the way I interpret it. Everybody could be slightly different in how they come to colors, but uh, for our basic shad pattern, I thought this would be a really nice pattern uh, for us to do. Okay, so in order to get our, our bone color, you know, I like just a white with, um, if we're doing small quantities, we're just doing two baits, put a couple of small drops of yellow in, one drop of sand, two there, and just do a little quick mix and see if it's to the bone color that, that you want. There's some bones have a little more yellow, some are a little more white, some are a little more brown in them. Uh, And obviously, the more white you add, the, the duller that pattern will be. So, this one's a little too yellow for me. So, I'm going to add a little more white to tone that yellow down. And we should be good to go on our, our bone color. And again, I just mix it right here in the cup. So we're going to base coat at about 35, 40 PSI.
so pretty close pretty close again we're not going to have that pearlescent look on it just yet but for a heat set definitely want to heat set our base coat layer extremely good i have already pre-sanded this bait done all the lure prep Really good. A little bit more on the base coat. Get every little bit covered. And a good foundation for our lure. As you can see, we're, we're, a, we're probably a shade bit, tad bit more yellow, maybe. Uh, but when I go over it with part, my sparklescent white, it's going to tone it back even more. So I think we're pretty good. Uh, I like it. Uh, I like this a little more yellower bone in the first place. Okay, so real simple. Now we need to determine what our second color is. Our back color is going to be on this. Uh, or while we're at it, we've already got bone. Let's make that a little more yellow and work on our belly color. Uh, being that we've already started on that, I'm going to add a couple more drops of yellow to it. And let's see if we can match that yellow on the stripe down the belly. That's a lot better. Yeah, a lot better. We probably need one more coat of it. Again, side by side. Again, you got to kind of see through the sparklescent in it, but and the clear coat because it's going to bring out a lot of that as well. Darken it up just a little right down the center. I think it's dead on, dead on match. Okay, so next up we gotta try to figure out uh, what color this is or get as close to it as we can. Guess that this is a kind of a sepia. Sepia is something I use a lot in, in lure art, uh, painting fish patterns. So we're gonna load our brush up and just got a piece of white paper here and we're just gonna spray us up. color and and see how closely now this sepia has got a little more a little more of a brown look to it but it's it's looking a little more gray to me than the sepia so you know if I'm going to try to get a dead on match it's going to take take us a little while to do that and this is just the process you go through as a beginner in order to color match a bait a picture that you see of a thread fin whatever pattern you're wanting to to match so i'm gonna load my brush up with a little bit of uh with a shade of gray and again how do we get to gray just straight out of the bottle pearl black i i've got a gut feeling it's going to be entirely too dark but again using our colors Well, we're getting some skipping in this brush.
Yeah, I believe that green is in that flake. Uh, let's add a little bit of white, just a tiny drop to lighten that black, pearl black, and let's see what what that does to our our color. Yeah, yeah, I like it. That, that just added one drop. You know, we only started with three or four drops of pearl black, so we we toned it down just a little bit with, I, I, I want to say it's got just a little bit of green in it. So let's take our, uh, let's take a dark green like moss. Here we've got some moss green. And just add a touch of that green to that, that pearl grayish. And let's see how that looks. Let's see if we get any green in it. I mean, I think a lot of it's the pearl, but there the green starts. Okay, I like it. Oh, yeah. Now, to me, that is dead on. Okay, so just our color combination. I would take note, write this down, keep a journal. I'm not sure how well you can see that with the shadows and the light, but uh, those two colors match perfectly. So... You know, I would make a mental note if I'm trying to match this particular bait. And uh, this is going to be my one. And this is pearl black, white. And I'm going to put wicked white because that's what I used. And moss green. Okay, now if you're mixing for doing several different baits, then, you know, you may have to figure out that, okay, this was four, one, one. Four drops to, to one of each of those, which is a pretty close to what where I started. So, but I think that's our back color, so we're going to spray that. We're going to see how it looks uh, against our bait here, and we'll move on to the next particular color, so... Want that to come down the shoulders because we're going to lay some, some scaling over that. Okay, very good. So we've got our back color, now we've got to do our scale pattern and we're going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple different uh, paints here that we could get our, our scaling effect. Um, and again, just go with one. Um, a quick silver chrome, very, very thin. It's really better over a black, uh, gloss black, um, but really gives you a good chrome effect. Could go with an aluminum base, which... We're going to spray that, and we have a, by Jacardi, a metallic silver, okay? So, um, these two are quite a bit thinner. This is a thicker paint, so when we press this, I think we'll get a better effect with this, but you could just use pearl silver. Your pearls, those colors are generally thinner, sometimes a little bit, uh, but we're going to go with uh, the aluminum base and a five millimeter brush okay but it's going to give us a really nice scale effect again i like the netting hoops to do our scales and again we're looking at our bait it just comes down right below the eye so 
We're gonna not cover the back, but just. And there you have, and that will really pop when you get the clear coat on. Okay, I'm gonna see if you can tell in the light, but let's go ahead and hit this other side. Get your scales like you want them. And angling the brush down on the bait. And there's the aluminum base. But let's try our metallic silver. Okay, you can spray this one through a 3.5 3 milliliter brush. It's pretty thin, but all these high pigmented flake patterns with metallics and pearls, and, uh, they, they all do a little better. Now this one's really thin, so we need to back our pressure down on this one to 20 or lower. And again, we're gonna use the same procedure. We're gonna hold that tight against the bait. Don't go too heavy with this stuff. It will run. Okay. Let's hit the other side. Make sure there's nothing on the back side. We want a good, clean scale pattern. I really need to turn this to you, but I can't ever get the right camera angle. Let's just do a little comparison. We know we've got the exact same baits. Lot, this is going to give you a lot thicker, shinier. This is a little more transparent as I see it. Uh, but again, both can do the same thing. Yeah, you could use just pearl silver uh, and you'd get more of a finish like this. This is going to be a little more transparent, so it's going to allow that uh, pearl black, greenish, grayish pattern we put down below it to kind of shine through it where this is gonna really make the scales stand out, okay? So, uh, just gonna give you a couple of different ideas there on how to get this Disco Shed scales to stand out a little bit more. I would recommend the aluminum base. Okay, for our next color, we're gonna do, um, it's not in the correct bottle, this is called Hot Rod. Uh, it's a very, very pearlescent uh, white. Uh, that we're going to go over the sides of this bait with. Um, and really just to, we'll probably just completely cover it a little bit. It's it's pretty, it's I've, I've reduced it down with 411 reducer. So it's just going to create a sparkle. I'm going to get some of that on the top. bring our pressure up when we're spraying this paint, even though I've reduced it. Yeah, much better. Kind of give it a good once over. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but we're throwing down a lot of pearls. And if you can see that in, on camera, Really nice. Uh, probably going to go a little heavier right here on the sides.
And we get a nice transition from our bone white into our yellow with a sparklescent color on it. Okay, for our um, shed dot, um, we need painted eyes on this one. But for our shed dot, again, we, uh, we can use a mask, which again, probably seen this in several videos. If you haven't, I'll leave a link in the description to all my uh, kind of a tutorial on products to be used for, for stencils or masks. And, um, you know, I'm thinking that first little hole sizer right there will be just about right. And we're gonna be shooting Wicked uh, Jet Black, okay? For our shed dot. Okay, I'm gonna bring my pressure down to about 15. We're gonna stick that right. And we have a good round clean. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the other side. We're, we're just right in the middle of the belly toward the back where it bends up and just below the eye. Um, with the center of that circle. So we're gonna to try to get that back in the right, that same exact spot. And that's always a little more difficult than you would think. But looking at it, I think we're dead on, okay? So there's one way, let me show you. Now you can just freehand these as you get more <clears throat> used to your, your trigger control and So for this particular one, I'm just going to, I'm going to start real narrow and pull the brush back to me to get more of a faded edge effect on this one. Start with a small dot, need a little more pressure. I can see how I'm getting some splattering. Clean that needle tip off, get a little bit of paint dry on it. And there you get more of a faded edge, if that's what you're after. For your shad dot. Okay, so we're pretty much, that's all there is to this bait. On this one in particular, you can add, yeah, I, you know, I just don't feel good about it. I got a little too much of the aluminum over that one. It's kind of, I think I'm gonna darken that back just a little bit with our, our black pearl. the Rapala Disco Shed Pattern. Anyway, thanks for checking in. I uh, hope the video wasn't too long. I wanted to go in depth, show you a couple different techniques on the shed dot, a couple different paint schemes as far as how to get those uh, chromed. And if you if you want the 3D look, you know, we, we can do a later video on on how we get these scales to lay in there a little more 3D looking. So uh, anyway, that's going to be it for today. Appreciate you stopping in and checking out the channel. Um, please leave comments in the comment section below. Um, if there's some pattern out there you'd like to see us do and how we replicate it and how we see it as a, uh, as a lure artist from Green Country Custom Baits, by all means leave that down there. And uh, please hit the subscribe button. Um, trying to grow this channel and provide some educational content to, to the beginner, um, the intermediate, the advanced, uh, anybody that's willing to uh, look at and collaborate on these uh, uh, custom lure art. Uh, it used to be more of a 
kind of a tight lip circle. People didn't want to give away their patterns. Everybody had their own stuff. And, and I know, you know, we can get into people copying different stuff and things like that, but <clears throat> I'm all about sharing. I don't have any secrets. So um, until next time, Green Country Custom Baits, signing out.